What is up everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video we are back with a two-parter. We're back with an episode, sort of, of Lions Latest, as well as a free agent profile. We're going to talk about a potential free agent target for the Lions this offseason, so let's get it started. Welcome everybody to another video. Glad you guys are here, and yes, we are back with another Detroit Lions video, of course, man, and free agency is right around the corner, March 13th. We are like officially a month away, I think a little bit less than that actually. And we did a show today on Bleach Report. Feel free to go check that out. The link is in the community tab right now. It's free, you guys can go check that out. And we have continued along a series. We did a preview, we talked about bringing back our players, what players to bring back. We also dove into how the Lions can clear some cast space cuts, things like that. So we've talked about all of it, all the way to a Tracy Walker potential, you know, maybe a little like restructure there, potentially a little pay cut potentially that could go down there as well as today we decided we discussed some potential free agent targets for the lions now for me it was a lot of kind of my first introduction into this free agent class to be honest with you i just dove into a ton of different players not really knowing exactly what i was looking for just like all right i just want to see what the heck is out there and one guy that kind of came across my radar in this process of preparing for this show was a player that we're going to talk about in today's video because I think he's a really interesting option for the Lions in free agency. I'm not saying that he is the answer, but he's an interesting option for the Lions. And I want to talk about the really the pros and cons and also about the player. But before we get to that, we do have some Lions news that we need to talk about first. And this was immediate today. Lance Newmark, the director of player personnel for the Lions, has been hired by the Washington Commanders to be their assistant general manager. Now, quick note to that is that Ray Agnew is our assistant general manager. So if you're wondering, why he wasn't in that position well there's your reason but Lance Newmark this is a really tough loss for the Lions right we talk about guys that have been able to stay through different regimes and the changes that have taken place Lance Newmark perfectly represents that here since 1998 worked his way up really through the college scouting side joined as a scouting intern he has taken the opportunity to advance to an assistant GM with the Washington Commanders. so first off just want to wish him the best of luck man congratulations on the opportunity for the Lions side this is a tough loss you know it's a really tough loss on top of it all and again, player personnel, like the personnel that's literally on your team. So whether that's the college scouting side or the pro scouting side, that is a massive loss for the Lions. Let's keep an eye on Brian Hudspeth, the director of college scouting currently. Again, that's kind of the path that Lance Newmark took as well in a sense. Maybe this is the opportunity for him to be promoted into that role. So that's just something to keep an eye on. But this is a tough loss. And again, rooting for Lance Newmark with Washington. But with that being said... Let's talk about a potential free agent target. And I, I got to say this. I apologize if I'm saying his name incorrectly. Andrew Van Ginkle. I think I'm saying his name right. That looks like how it's spelled. I could be saying it wrong, though. I apologize. The 28-year-old edge defender from the Miami Dolphins. We're also going to talk about PFF's projected contract for Andrew Van Ginkle. Now, that's not to say that this is going to be necessarily 100% accurate. But just kind of the ballpark that they threw this player into. We're going to discuss that a little bit more towards the end of this video. But this is a player that man I didn't really know what to expect I did not all I knew about Miami was okay they had Vic Fangio as their defensive coordinator we know that they like to play kind of a 3-4 style defense they have had a lot of edge defender injuries so I wasn't really sure what to expect when I dove into Andrew Van Ginkle he stepped into a much larger role as an edge defender in that defense because of the injuries that took place you look at guys like Jalen Phillips so he had to step into big shoes but he was already taking snaps in a rotational fashion also at off ball linebacker as well before really working down significantly onto the line of scrimmage as a stand-up edge defender he was successful in a rotational role but then that role while it's not that his staffs like dramatically went up it was more so that his role kind of shifted into okay now you're going to play a lot on the line of scrimmage with some of the injuries that we're dealing with and even him he deal with an, he dealt with an injury at the end of the season heading into the playoffs but Andrew Van Ginkle this 28 year old edge defender really caught my eye and you know there's just some guys and right now I'm kind of in the draft kick right I'm just diving into different players for this year's draft so if you're wondering like you know what he's been doing that's what I've been doing is focusing on catching up on a lot of these draft prospects and I'm just getting through as many as I can at the same time but when you're in that right you can kind of tell right away like which guys that you like as a fan just in terms of like yo that guy he's a football player right that guy brings the toughness he brings the effort you see it every single play and this guy immediately was like that's me. Special teams production, playing on the kickoff team, the punt team, and then just also the incredible motor. And this was outlined by multiple people even coming out of this draft. But when you see it, you're like, oh, okay. 
Okay, I definitely see it. Now, this is also a former Wisconsin Badger, which I think just makes sense. I should have assumed this, right, when looking at this player because of the role that he plays. Like, Wisconsin, for whatever reason, they just put out these types of players over and over, whether that's Erbig or Zach Bond, and all of a sudden we also have Andrew Van Ginkle. But I didn't really know about him, about him anything about him before doing today's video. So I'm going to talk a little bit through the player, and then I'm going to talk about kind of the pros and cons as we go through this of potentially being interested in signing this player in free agency. I will lay this out there. I do think that Brad Holmes' strategy is going to be very similar to maybe what we saw last year in free agency. I don't think things are going to drastically change. And I think it's because Brad Holmes kind of laid out that that's not going to drastically change. That's how they're building this team. They're building it through the draft. And when you look at the roster, you're like, ah, maybe not a ton of guys under contract. And that was a little bit ago before some of the future signings and things like that started to come into play. But it's also been laid out that, like, look, man, a lot of your productive players, your core pieces, they're under contract. Now it's about extending them. That feels like the next major step is Ali McNeil. You can throw Derek Barnes into that mix. I'm and Ross St. Brown, Penny Sewell, like there's a lot of those dudes. The first year's draft class can now negotiate. So that feels like the next big step. You also could throw Jared Goff into that mix as well for the Lions. It's like, okay, it's about extensions. I assume they're going to give out more one-year deals, like, okay, kind of prove it type of deals. Maybe that falls into kind of that 27 age range. Like, let's give them a shot, see what they have, whether that's Emmanuel Mosley last year, unfortunately, the injury, or Khalif Raymond the first time around. You know, maybe that's someone like that that the Lions look to do that again with. And maybe they sprinkle in a couple of multi-year deals, but I don't expect to see a ton of outside of how small tie your deals because the Lions have a lot of good players and a big part of free agency is re-signing your own players. But they could have a couple, like we saw last season, whether it was Cam Sutton or David Montgomery. And you know they weren't massive. They did have a few from out of house. And this could potentially be one of those options for the Lions. Really broke him down as kind of an edge defender. But I do think it's very important because the flexibility is what really makes this player stand out when you watch him. He's sitting at about six foot four, 240 pounds. Again, former fifth round pick back in 2019 by the Miami Dolphins. And statistically speaking, this past season, he had 53 total pressures as well as 32 hurries, which really stood out eight sacks which again we'll kind of talk about a little bit more but a lot of those are also effort sacks like the guy just does not give up on the play and his pff grades across the board were absolutely incredible whether that's only allowing just over a 50 pass rating according to pff run defense was really strong as well and then also he's just all over the place always affecting the passer some way somehow he's affecting the passer no about you guys but the offseason is officially underway however However, I'm still super invested into football right now, and I think this is the perfect time to start to look at some of these future bets. So we're back here on BetUS. Use that top link in the description, and man, they have an awesome offer going on right now where you can actually get a 125% bonus on your first three deposits if you use code JOIN125, the number 125, JOIN125, and you can see over here on BetUS right now, as well as all the things aligned on the top of your screen from live betting casino games they also have sportsbook as well promotions bet us tv and of course customer service excellent customer service 24 7 customer service they'll stay in contact with you easy to get in contact with them as well and a great faq page if you have any questions as well as an opportunity to join into their loyalty program if you're just making bets with bet us they also got some future bets out here as well and man this one is the one that caught my eye and this is NFL Super Bowl winner for 2025. So this is very early, but you can see where our lines are at, at plus 1,200. I just think if there's a time to do it, this might be the time. I mean, we're below Buffalo right now. We're below Buffalo. We know that's going to change when the season starts. But right now, we're below, we're below Cincinnati. I can understand Kansas City. I can... I mean, I kind of can understand San Fran. I wanted to say that, but I don't know if I can. Hold up. The, the two in front of us, I can. Baltimore, okay, whatever. The point is, this might be the best time. These might be the best odds that you got. I don't know, but it just feels like this might be the best time to take advantage of plus 1,200 for the Detroit Lions. Or if you're crazy, you might be like, yo, Carolina, this is the time. You just wait till Bryce Young starts cooking. I'm not going to do that, but you do you. Again, use that top link in the description, man. Shout out to BetUS for partnering for with us for this NFL season, man. Now let's get back to the video. And especially when he's playing more of that off-ball role, right? He plays kind of the sandbacker in that defense. Whether that was lining over the slot, playing on the line of scrimmage, or playing from off-ball inside the box, his ability to blitz was very threatening. I thought a lot of times he was actually much more threatening as a pass rusher from different spots than it was just getting on the line and rushing off the edge where a tackle was expecting to have to deal with this guy. When he came in late, he was a handful to deal with because of his lateral agility, the quickness laterally. He was just a handful to get your hands on. He has some slither and you're just like, 
like, yo, how do I deal with this guy? And then also at the same time, he brings flexibility to redirect and he's getting off of blocks. You're like, this guy's an absolute issue as a blitzer. So he definitely brings that value. But looking at him specifically as a guy that's on the line of scrimmage, he's not going to stand out in terms of his get off off the line of scrimmage. And I think a lot of that, some of that is depth that he creates within his steps. Now, here's what I do like, and this more is about pass rush in general. I really like the craftiness in terms of his pacing as a pass rusher. Now, I won't show many clips like this. This is the first game I watched. That's why these clips look terrible. So just bear with me. Most clips will not look like this. But I think the biggest thing that stands out about his get off is while it doesn't consistently look like a top tier get off, however, what you do see is the real quickness. And it, I'll talk about it in a second. It mainly shows up as a six technique or an on ball press defender on tight ends. But you're also going to see it here. You can see the burst and the twitch. And that comes back to the pacing and the fact that not every get off is the same. He adapts to what he's been getting, what look he's getting from the tackle. So again, short sets, he looks like he's absolutely absolutely flying and to me it's not about the ground that he covers as much that's a little bit of an issue but the quickness and the twitch in the lower body that is also an issue but that time for the offensive tackle I thought it really grew honestly in a short amount of time just significantly playing on the line of scrimmage is there's real craftiness there and how to set up blocks sometimes it can be a little bit hit and miss hand usage but in terms of pacing his pass rush setups right pressing the edge or pressing the offensive tackle slowing down speeding up changing up my strides I liked how crafty he was with that and in terms of a pure pass rusher there's a lot of areas that probably still need consistent work with that being said though you'll see examples like this where you can see kind of the pass rush idea behind it like okay i'm gonna then press the offensive tackle kind of lull him to sleep and then i'm gonna leap chop down outside but he doesn't really sell it incredibly well some of that again length that he's able to cover he doesn't consistently press an offensive tackle and at times that can lead to issues because when he presses too tight on a tackle then all of a sudden they get their hands in his chest so there's like some working out and really trying to figure out what exactly is the best for him but you can see always a, a process and some craftiness there's a plan there there's an idea sometimes it just doesn't stick to land when he kind of plays in some of the six technique you'll see this where he's in an on ball press situation where he's pressed up with the tight end on the line of scrimmage and he's being asked to maybe shoot a gap because they're bringing a slot blitz so they're like okay hey shoot inside the tight end on play and you see the quickness off the line of scrimmage the quick reaction time to step in front lateral quickness and all of a sudden he can split gaps get into the backfield as a pure pass rusher i don't think it stands out in terms of first step but he can be a threat again especially as a blitzer the quickness does become a problem now as a pass rusher Here's here's where this thing gets interesting to me. And you talk about how does he fit to the Lions? Well, there's really two ways that I look at this, right? There's a pro and con side. So the pro side of making this addition, saying the Lions signed Andrew Van Ginkle. We're gonna keep talking about the player, but on one side, I'm bringing back James Houston. He's an exclusive rights free agent. One more season, I'm bringing him back. We're gonna make sure that happens. There's really no guarantees there. There's no really downside to do it, and it's James freaking Houston. Okay, I think he's got a lot in the tank. We just need him healthy. So he's coming back for me, right now. The Lions can add more pieces out of that, but he's coming back. Then you also have a guy like Derek Barnes, and to me, he becomes a very significant factor in this because of how much he began to play on the line of scrimmage. Okay, at first was Jack Campbell, then we started to see Derek Barnes, and I thought Barnes really grew in that role. There were some games earlier I was like, this is not good. This is not good. We know that his background at Purdue playing as a defensive end, he had some. Experience Experience playing on the line of scrimmage, but I thought he grew. He just got better in that role, and he has one year left on his deal. Obviously, we saw the big time interception against Tampa Bay, so you're like, oh, there's some of the flexibility. Drop out from edge, get an interception. So there's one side of it where I'm like, oh, what I like about this fit is that while I'm going to talk about him here, there's aspects, especially as a pass rusher, where I'm like, yeah, he doesn't touch James Houston. However, that's why he would be the perfect combo with James Houston because Houston can still have a legitimate role, even if Houston was just your third down piece, which he kind of came when he came back and helped with health last season that's okay that guy can still fill that role and you can also have them both on the field at the same time but Van Ginkle can also potentially pick up in some of the areas where you have some concern in that sandback role and you can continue to utilize that position but instead now you have really two pieces that can play that role just with two different major strengths the downside is what I just laid out and that's having Derek Barnes to me that's one of the biggest cons of this move in general is that his role where I think you'd want him the most while you'd make this kind of signing is going to directly probably impact Derek Barnes in his role and with one year left and the way that I think he finished a year it's a very good chance Lions say Barnes, Houston, may we add somebody else in the draft. We like what we have there. We want those guys to continue to get that work. And I would understand that. That being said, we are a little bit light, light and an outside linebacker after hitting free agency again. Charles Harris, Julian Okwara, Romeo Okwara. As a pass rusher, here's the reason I bring it up. When I watch him, 
I talked a little bit about how I think he could win, where I think he lacks first off speed to power conversion. Now, I'm not saying that necessarily James Houston gives you a ton of this either in that sandbacker role. Again, makes sense his size. Again, another guy's about 240 pounds, a little bit shorter. You get, I think, better length here with Andrew Van Ginkle pushing six foot four, and you see that in his game, especially against the run. But in terms of a pass rusher, you don't get a lot of the speed to power. You don't get a lot of the, you know, great leverage and walk back. You, you just don't create a lot of that naturally within his game. In terms of some of the ways that he does win as a pass rusher, and we'll talk about this a little bit more with hand usage as well, is he does have a, a couple moves in his repertoire. Like I talked about some of the movement skills that he has in a way that he kind of strides himself off the line of scrimmage, which I really like. But then he also gives you some specific examples of ways that he can win. First off, I love the chop across the face of an offensive tackle with his chop move, and also he can press the offensive tackle, chop back outside. Now there's definitely areas where I have questions about the flexibility, but in a play like this, you can see him press the offensive tackle, get that left hand on the back of the offensive tackle's arm on the play as he presses him, and then it'll play like this. It's maybe not the cleanest laterally here as he kind of sets it up, kind of gives a little bit of a tell here. It's not as distinctive as I'm going to press and shoot back outside using my agility. Instead, it kind of flows a little bit into the outside pass rush move, but still the hand usage to chop down, then even the second effort rip through to really try to clear himself through. Again, I have some questions at the top of the arc. You'll see him on the ground a little bit too often. Some of the maybe that ankle flexion to stick himself in the ground and then pop back to the quarterback, but you definitely see the hip movement that's really impressive as a pass rusher. He's able to create an edge in that spot. He has some creative ways to get an edge. When we talk about some of the flexibility, there's two areas where I really think he brings flexibility to the table that's very impactful. The biggest one, hip flexibility. All right, It's his ability to push vertically and then be able to get lateral and continue to work as a pass rusher while still creating depth as a pass rusher. This is an area where some of the agility, I think, shows up with Aiden Hutchinson. I think you see this as well when you watch Andrew Van Ginkle, and it makes him a threat, especially pushing around on some of those outside pass rush attempts. To me, his redirectability in terms of flexibility. His ability at the top of the pass rush to sink and redirect back into the play. And this is really crucial, again, especially in today's NFL with quarterbacks that like to move around and run where, you know, you're not going into every game plan saying just get to the quarterback no matter how you can. It's a lot of like, okay, we got to make sure that we don't let the quarterback leave the pocket, right? So there's so much emphasis on that that a player like this, just his flexibility alone to redirect, press the top of the pocket, sink down, spin back into the play. It opens up a real spin move pass rush arsenal that not every edge defender has we've talked about already some as just draft prospects that don't really have that in their game this guy absolutely has that setup whether that's his go-to or whether that's the counter setup I think he can leave his chest a little bit exposed as a pass rusher part of this to me is he really has to close distance okay because of the way that he wins kind of that lateral quickness he needs to press an offensive tackle if he wants to get around the edge and quick hand swipe chop down lead, launch in front uh, he does have to close a lot of distance between the tackle does I have excellent lengths necessar length necessarily, and because of that, again, not the longest strides either. He closes some ground. It can allow his chest to be exposed. They can kind of get clean punches. We saw it against Kansas City, for example. They'll close the space on him, and then they'll kind of wall up and kind of shut off his pass rush a little bit there as well. Now, that transitions me into some of the hand usage, and there's things that I really like here. I mean, this is run and pass. First off, he has sufficient arm length, over 32-inch arms, which is not bad necessarily, and I really like his feel of where the break points are as a pass rusher. Like, when it hits, it's beautiful, right? Back of the elbow, the wrist, you really see it, right? The chop moves, the swim moves, you'll see the setup that's really good. And when it looks good, it looks really good. It loves the lateral quickness, and he knows exactly where to get his hands. He also has kind of the second effort rip to kind of clean off. He's been an absolute menace for pulling offensive linemen on the front side of the play. Here comes the guard around. He's been an absolute menace to just get hands on him. Some of this comes back to that lateral agility. He smells it, he senses it, feels it, and then he can make a guy miss. Limited a little bit is when you talk about a couple different ways. First off, you know, playing on the edge. Maybe it's a wide zone attack. It'd be one, consistently being able to get his hands free and get back inside. I think he actually sets a pretty pretty adequate edge, okay? His play strength is not anything that's going to stand out in terms of, man, he's just mauling over people, but it's really strong considering his size and where he's usually getting matched up against, against tight ends and offensive tackles. He handles his own pretty well, and I think he positions himself really well to set an edge, be able to hold and maintain the edge, where he has issues then is kind of reset setting himself where he can set that edge and then work back off it and get back inside of an offensive tackle. That's where I think you get hit and miss results as well as, say, a play is going away from him. They try to set up one of the pin pull looks.
looks. Here comes a receiver, crash down. They try to get away from him. He can get kind of washed up in some of those plays where he doesn't get off as fast as you would like or stack and shed as quickly. You don't get some of the push-pull, and then it's like, oh, I'm launching back into the play. He really becomes reliant then on some of his closing ability within his quickness. So, you know, there's always that little give and take right there, as well as working through multiple blocks. And this is what the area that I didn't love was working through, like, okay, here's a tight end. Now here's an offensive tackle. Like, deal with this and go to this. Being able to transition from first to get to my second. To, and you see it with some of the more experienced rushers. I was watching Leonard Floyd, and I was like, oh, yeah, he could do that. He, he can play through multiple blocks being prepared to deal with it. I didn't think he was excellent at playing through multiple blocks consistently. The agility is strong as well. Like, he's pretty good mover in space. We'll talk about his coverage a little bit in a, sense, in a second. The lateral sidesteps as well really opens up the pass rush ability. And then there's the flexibility. Again, the hip flexibility is the biggest thing as a pass rusher here to me that really stands out. I'll tell you what, I'm a very big fan of him as a run defender. And an example like this against Dallas is just absolutely beautiful. Staying in the chest of the tight end, reading inside, outside, but staying in control of this block before then launching outside to close once he reads the back, but controlling the block. And he does as well against tight ends. Unless it's like an offensive tackle where occasionally he can't get back inside, but he sets a strong edge but can't get back inside. Or it's a guy like Patrick Ricard, which is basically like an offensive lineman. He does really well against tight really ends in these spots. Really ability to redirect within the pocket, find the quarterback, and then his closing ability is in incredible. I mean, he really can close. Dallas was the first game I watched, and I was like, yo, who is this dude? Now, I had to watch a lot more because I'm like, all right, this is – it didn't look like that every game. But the closing ability is disgusting, and that's what stood out immediately when watching this player. And it's even in spots like this where, like, on one hand, you're like, yo, that quickness is nasty on this play, and even some of the hand usage. But then on the flip side, you're like, man, I'd like to see it be a little bit more just disciplined in terms of, yo, press it and then bounce outside, right? Don't kind of float into it. Don't kind of gradually move into the second effort or the or the or where you're trying to ultimately get to where the tackle can start to kind of move with you and get a tell where you're going with the pass rush it's like be more decisive with where you're going but at the same time you're like yo there's a lot of really nice traits here and to me there's still untapped potential as a pure pass rusher by far pure ankle bend ankle flexion top of the pass rush right kind of turn the corner sink down get around the edge i got a step or we're even with the tackle i can sink the edge and kind of cut it off there are too many examples where he finds himself on the ground or an offensive tackle will kind of be able to push him out of the play he's not as flexible doesn't have the same ridiculous ridiculous, bendy, top-of-the-art pass rush ability like a guy like James Houston has. But in, in ways, I think he's got different things that James Houston does bring to the table. Actually, really more so in different areas. As a pass rusher, I think for him, he does a nice job, like I said, with the strides and the setup as well as James Houston. He doesn't have the same bend to him, but I do think that he has strong hand usage. He still does bring lateral quickness as well. Brings excellent closing ability and really nice feel for rushing the passer, and that's huge. Just having a sense of where the quarterback or where the ball is really Really good feel and this shows up as a run defender as well like the instincts of where the ball is going to be he's uh, really good in that area slippery for oncoming blocks so I think from a uh, instincts side he's really strong now here's where he starts to break into some different categories where he stands out a little bit more to me than what I've seen so far from a guy like James Houston albeit in a limited role and for James Houston specifically like he can do some of these things um, he just needs to get more snaps but number one in coverage now this would have been more so of a strong case if I would have said after you know we played Baltimore and I was like this is the only game and the season ended here you'd be like yeah this probably makes a ton of sense go get this guy now but as I said Derek Barnes improved right he improved from the Chicago game the first time around playing on a line of scrimmage and it was like okay we changed up the personnel a little bit I thought we just got a lot better there but where I think Van Ginkle really helps you is coverage flexibility. And this was a huge part of this Miami defense. But at the same time, it's also his movement skills. It's also his ability to read the eyes of the quarterback. He's really strong at the catch point, which is a huge aspect for his game. For a guy at this position to be pretty natural at breaking, at jarring the ball loose at the catch point is, is an area where he also stands out to me. I think he can get pushed off a little bit against physical tight ends at the top of routes. Right, He doesn't play with the physicality that I love in terms of man coverage. But when you talk about the eye balance as an underneath coverage defender really strong eye balance reading the quarterback's eyes finding a way late to just get into place I mean he'll just be around the ball in terms of oh the ball got tipped up he's going to be around it likely on the play I also love the instincts in terms of I'm playing on the edge here comes the flat take the running back out of the play and he made some crucial plays discipline is one of the stronger areas of his game whether that's pursuit angles against the run as I said I think he sets a solid you know strong edge and he's very slippery for oncoming blocks but he can get washed out at times but in terms of discipline it's where he really adds so 
much as a run defender. Number one, on the backside, always aware of the quarterback, right? Read option, play action bootleg, right? I'm not going to just dive down. Always aware unless he doesn't have that responsibility. Like, let me be patient. Let me just take a second to read before I just dive on the play. But at the same time, he does the little things, taking away the running back flat. Like, there was a fourth down here against Buffalo, which was absolutely huge, where he just took away the running back on the play, and Josh doesn't know where to go with the football. He does little things like that consistently where it's discipline, it's finding angles, over to the run, way away from the play. The excellent motor that he plays with to just get himself into the play and just take excellent angles. Again, he has a really nice feel. Ball's going away from me. Where do I need to step to? Ball's coming towards me, but he's going inside the guard, for example, and I'm outside the tight end. Let me step back up field. Let me get back into the play. Just finding ways to find the football, right? He is a he has a feel and a sense for finding the ball. And to me, that's where it's like easy to stand out, whether that's motor and effort that he brings, play after play after play, he's out there. But then also just a sense and having a knack for where the football is from coverage to run defense you're like yeah this guy is just a straight football player biggest knocks to me would be one he's not you know going to match up with the receiver naturally which is just very understandable so option routes you know he's going to let those things play out he'll give up some space again I love the way that he can close after the catch I also love the way that he attacks the ball at the catch point he also can lean a little bit too heavy in some of the eye discipline of I'm reading the quarterback and not necessarily a receiver even though he usually seems to have a sense of where that receiver is but instead of like maybe diving on the route he can lean a little bit more or to like let me read that quarterback's eyes but again I really do like him in co coverage I think he's a plus player in coverage I think the statistics bear it out and then one of the best examples is always screens and you see it the first time you see a screen tor thrown towards him even if he's not jumping on it you're like okay but he has a sense that it's there like he feels that he's kind of sliding that direction he's not completely out of the play and then he had the picks against Washington I was like that makes sense absolutely makes sense because even though he wasn't blowing up other screens he always like even if he's a step late he's getting a hand on it late but he's never like completely out of it or washed out of a screen he just ran by everything like there's there's a discipline, there's a feel to it, there's a sense to it. And when Washington ran this, he was on the front side of the play and he just read where the tackle was going. He's like, Yeah, that's a screen. Stepped in front, picked it off, took it back to the house. You're like, That makes sense. That encapsulates what this player is capable of in terms of just awareness and feel on the line of scrimmage. The same thing shows up in terms of just affecting pass lanes. So even when he's not dropping, if he's blitzing on the play, right? Getting in the pass lanes, consistently being just effective, just being a a nuisance for a quarter. Like, oh, I'm in the pass lane, I'm kind of tall, let me jump up, let me just get in the way a little bit here. Tracking the quarterback down, the closing speed, having a sense of where the ball is. And to me, you also start along with special teams ability, which is where he he still played on special teams for Miami this past season. The effort, you get the late sacks. I don't think he's on the pass rush level as James Houston, even though maybe the PFF grades will say that or the numbers will say that. I don't really view that. I think at their best, James Houston's just a better pass rusher. And I think he's got much more upside. Again, some of this is probably comes back to the ankle flexion and top of the rush bend as well, whether that's balance or plays like this, just kind of getting pushed out of the pocket. Here you can see he's going to try to transition, create from that speed to power, doesn't really get much balance. But I will also say with Andrew Van Ginkle, what I do think is that right now at this very moment, he would improve us in terms of just instincts on the line of scrimmage, understanding like, okay, here comes the flat play the responsibility right I'm not and not everything is going too fast he plays everything plays slow for him on line of scrimmage making plays on line stepping down to that sandback role but also being comfortable to float into the slot like we've seen at times with James Houston right really having that role become a real role in this defense we saw with Derek Barnes as well and then also being a very effective blitzer from the second level he can hide it but at the same time he's just a, a menace from there because now you get the lateral quickness you don't know where he's coming from he can be utilized on stunts and be very effective he's very effective on stunt work so I think what he adds to you is a better run defense Taking on pulling offensive linemen, setting a relatively strong edge. Maybe you could say Barnes with his length has more upside here. I think that's very that's very fair. But he's a good run defender. He tackles well. The only occasional thing is he'll kind of like fly by the tackle a little bit, but he tackles pretty well in space from what I've seen. He's a very good run defender on the line of scrimmage and even off ball. He's pretty good as well. What stands out from off ball is the ability to stack and shed. Like you talk about the hand usage, you know immediately he's got good hands on the line because as soon as he goes to off ball, you're like, oh yeah, he's handling guards and centers, and he's not like the biggest or longest guy but he's handling that matchup the guy's hand usage his ability to defend the run but not only on the line but off the ball as well to me he'd improve us as a run defender that could play kind of that role for the Lions as that sandbacker role but he also gives you a really nice coverage piece the flexibility special teams value as well and while I'm not necessarily putting him on like what I think James Mitch Houston can get to as a pass rusher when you talk about when they put Campbell on the line of scrimmage or Barnes they ask them to pass rush Van Ginkle would be a big step forward from what we've seen there big step as well and a nice pass rusher like you can put him out there on pass downs though if it was like who do you want James or James or him I would put James out there but to me the real 
the thing is, those two could coexist together. They could both have a role. And it's not one of these things where it's like, well, if James Houston pops, like, does he have to be out of role? No, not really, because he gives you flexibility to off ball linebacker if you had injuries. He can still play in a different role alongside James Houston, but he could also play your early base downs when you want to play with a sandbacker. He could that's you have James Houston slide in if he was just purely a pass rushing specialist for you. It would mainly to me take away from some of the role from Barnes. And I don't want to do that necessarily. I'm a, I'm a Derek Barnes fan, but I do think that it's a very interesting option because I think clearly he's a he's an upgrade in some of those areas, not necessarily as a pure pass rusher, but we had injuries to James Houston. And Houston didn't look awesome this past year. He looked great in his first year, but he didn't look awesome this past year. And Van Ginkle, while he's limited some areas, the hip flexibility opens up a couple of different ways that he can win. You'll see some attempts to long arm, but really the guy can win as a pass rusher. Like he's he's not just all effort and sacks. He can win. He's gotten some really nice wins out there. He doesn't have the deepest bag, but he can absolutely win and can rush the passer. He could be a constant force, a solid pass rushing force getting started there to me in terms of playing that role. And to me, when you wrap this all up, what's most interesting is PFF projected a two-year $13 million deal or two-year six-and-a-half per year million dollar deal. And what immediately hit me is I'm like, yo, that sounds very similar to the Charles Harris contract. Looked it up. Charles Harris originally, year $13 million extension with the Lions. Obviously, we renegotiated that, moved that number down this past season. We had to open some cap flexibility and we were able to do that. But that number sounds very familiar. So to me, it makes sense because Charles Harris broke out, statistically speaking. Van Ginkle, kind of in the same way, right? He doesn't bring maybe all the top end traits, but what he did do is have a really stellar season. He's a football player and he's a well versatile piece. Could the Lions be interested? I'd say yes. Should they be interested? I would be interested because I think he fits what you have in this defense and what you utilize in this defense. However, the flip side is if we didn't add him, would it be a problem? No, because I think the Lions have the pieces. And they said, hey, we want to go forward with James and Barnes and add to that. I get it. I absolutely do. But I think this is a very intriguing option. And he's someone that I probably would have never talked about if it wasn't for doing this little series over there on Bleacher Report. So just guess the name that caught my eye. Someone that stuck it to me. I was like, yo, who is this guy? Is anybody talking about this guy? Let me. I hear all the Daniel Hunter stuff. I get it. All right, We talked about him at the trade deadline. Is anybody talking about Andrew Van Ginkle? Who is this dude? So I want to talk about him a little bit. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'm going to leave it right there. Should the Lions sign Andrew Van Ginkle? What do you think? Have you seen him? Did you know about him before I talked about him? You probably did. How'd you feel about him? Thank you for watching, and I'm out.